my name is Danny Cobalt, and welcome back to Monster Loves You. I know I just played this a couple days ago, but I really want to keep playing it. I love this. It's so cute. It's so interesting. The story is so good. So, curl up. Have a nice little chat. Learn to grow up. I've got my drink. You get yours. And let's resume. Oh, we're a teenager now. Who knows what troubles and tribulations await us. Let's enter the big bad world. And I had so much issue with the last episode that I'm excited to get in and play it so that it actually works properly. Okay, can I do anything else than adventure? No, I can. Jiggity, jiggity, bit, bat, biggity, boom! Okay, adventure in town. Alrighty, let's go on a quest. You and the gob claws are playing Toss the Kit. Aww! You're winning two to one when crash you miss and the kitten shatters Hamrig's window. Why are you throwing a kitten around? That's my question. Oops, stick around or run for it. Uh let's stick around. We gotta face what we did. Hamrig comes out crash comes crashing out of his hovel, still half asleep but all the way angry. Who did this? I'll drown you in the spawning vat. I cannot tell a lie. Oh, jeez. Hamreg whirls and glares at you so hard that you feel heavy and hot. His eyes begin to shine with a weird red light. Oh, really? Got close through the kitten. It was me. Perhaps we should have been more careful. Let's be a bit diplomatic. Hamreg yells until he gets tired. As an afterthought, he grabs the kitten from you and eats it before slamming his front door. Hamreg, you evil monster. Gobclaw's size. I was going to eat that kitten. Mmm, roast kitten. No! Shush! Okay, let's go on a better adventure. One that doesn't involve eating kittens. Let's go for a nice little stroll. It's such a nice day today. Perfect weather to wander outside of town. Though, you're not really supposed to leave Omen until you're older. Walk the forest paths nearish Omen. Just take a nap in the sun, right here in Portland Square. I think a nap in the sun sounds nice. We'll just enjoy the day. You do just that, warming your weary body. <sighs> well, that wasn't much of an adventure, but at least we didn't get in trouble. What's this one? Is this fr frosh? I still can't say that word. Today is a holiday, Pope the Bear Day. Monsters have been planning pranks for days. You all head out to the bear caves. Pope the Bear Day? What's that? It's a day when the elders take younger monsters to show their ferocious fer ferocious that by taunting and bothering an especially big strong pack of talking bears. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Let's get let everyone else get their butts kicked. You're not stupid. Ooh. Let's do it. Sounds fun. You join the crowd of monsters, shuffling, walking, skipping and scuttling through the woods. Soon you've reached the caves. The bears are already outside, waiting and watching. Poke the biggest bear with your sharpest stick. Confuse a bear with the got your nose routine. Find out if bears sneeze. Chase a bear with a thorn bush. Let's see if they sneeze. That seems the least harmful. You put a plate of blackberries and pepper by a cave. A sleepy bear eats, then sneezes. No one seems too impressed. Oh, okay. Oh, that's all the adventure I got to do? I didn't even get to try another prank. Okay, what's this one? Jeez. Nash Nash is picking on the tiny blistery. Leave bl blistery alone! She gets knocked down every time she gets up. Nash Nash asks if you want to help. Ask why she's doing that to blistery. Walk away, Nash Nash is insane. I kind of agree. Help Nash Nash hurt blistery. No! I'd rather fight you, Nash Nash. Ooh. Well, I don't think I really need to ask her why she's hurting blistery, because that just kind of seems to be her way. So let's fight her. Oh, I got fero ferocity. There, I said it! <laughs> Without even th a thanks, Blistery runs away. Well, gee, you're welcome, Blistery. Leaving you and Nash Nash to tussle in the street. Do you push the attack? Yes, claw, bite, kick. No, Blistery's safe. Mm. Let's continue. Nash Nash is savage, but she's tired herself out and you're full of energy. You beat Nash Nash to a pulp. Nash Nash pants. I'm impressive. <laughs> Did you, did you respect me for that, Nash Nash? Alright, what's this? Shadow Walker? You, Nash Nash, and Globclaw, 
gob claws hide in a stand of prickly thorn bushes, watching human children run back to their bus. But what's that they left? Shiny, red, round things? It's a scooter! My Nash Nash bat Battle Nash Nash and Glob Claws for it. Firsties, race to the scooter to claim it. Yeah! You all charge out of the bushes, only to trip over each other and land in a pink pile of feathers, scales, and fur. Now what? Mine refused to be defeated. Sharing is caring. Let Nash Nash win. Mmm. I really want to ride the scooter. But is she going to attack us if we do? Let's <laughs> let her get it. <laughs> As she pushes her foot onto your face, into your face, you realize Nash Nash is the true owner of the scooter. You let her up and pin Gob Claws, who bites your ear in fury. Alrighty. Okay, too many exciting things. You find Bliss Tree crouched in the forest, petting a rather furry spider. It doesn't look too good. In fact, it's not moving at all. Let's examine the spider. Aw. The spider is furry, but it should be much furrier. Patches of its stiff hair are falling out. Its eyes are dull and... Did it just cough? I didn't know spiders could cough. You find Blistery crouched in the forest. Pet oh, that's the same thing. Encourage Blistery and move on. Help Blistery help the spider. Prod the spider awake with a stick. Let's help her. You take a moment to assess the situation. There's a whole web full of equally large spiders in the alley beside Blistery's hovel. They seem tense and you think they're staring at you. The sick spider shivers. Place it with the other spiders. Go find medicine. Feed it some flies. Ooh. Let's go find some medicine. You rush off and find the spine doctor. She smirks when you describe the problem and gives you a clay flask full of sticky liquid. Three drops, no more. Take it. As you return, Blistery shouts, hurry, it's dying. You splash some medicine on the little creature. Wait for it. The spider stands up on its eight legs, coughs, and scurries away with a quick faint. Blistery fairly beams at you in happiness. Aw, that was cute. We helped a little spider. Let's go do this one. Elder Jaggery, Jaggery grabs your claws and drags you out of town. I need you to scare a pig for me, he says. Here we go again. Jaggery sniffs the air and says, Never mind, there it goes. He gallops away, leaving you alone in a grassy meadow. Run home as fast as you can. Explore a bit. Oh, was that not very clever? As you poke around in the bushes, a ball rolls through them and comes to rest at your feet. Like the one I'm standing on? That's a human thing. Better run away. Walk through the bushes. Ooh. Let's walk through the bushes. <laughs> not being very clever today, am I? You see a human sitting in the middle of the meadow. Hasn't spotted you yet, but it looks up at the sound of your movement. Flee, flee, or wait and see what the human does. Let's wait and see. <laughs> my, uh, my cleverness isn't really doing that well. The human looks at you, waves its arms, burps, and laughs. The sound sends shivers down your spine. Watch the human, but be, but be ready to run. The human, still sitting, points at the bushes behind you. It makes a sound. It seems to be very young, no more than a monster -like. Or even a morsel. Give it back to its ball or mess with the human lane. Let's give it back to its ball. You can't bring yourself to come and reach, but you pick up the ball and roll it towards the human lane. The human lane laughs again. Enough! Go home before something bad happens! You run along to Omen with a bit of news, perspective, and a story. The other monsters are impressed that you've interacted with a human. Yay, we got some respect! That's always nice. Okay, I think we just have one more choice. Let's do this one. Blots waddles over to you. I'm all out of snacks. Got any to spare? Regard Blots for a moment. <laughs> Blots is tiny. In the right light, one could easily mistake him for a squirrel. His neck is especially flexible from looking over his shoulder so much. He's Nash Nash's best friend, which means she constantly attacks him. <laughs> Tell Blots you won't help him. Aw, give him a snack. Why not? Blots grins. That's great. Thanks so much. He waddles away, munching on a bitter beetle. Nice. So, do we have one more then? How's my cleverness doing? 20 out of 100. Okay. Let's do one more then. Oh, wait, no, here. Adolescence is fleeting. You have grown beyond youth and become an adult. Yes! You've been dragged from your bed by your friends and neighbors. Trying to sleep here, fight them. What? Who? The where? Why? Why now? They tell you it's time to grow up. <laughs> 
Thanks, friends. You're taken into the woods. The neighbors throw you into the center of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. They whisper to each other, then look at you, then whisper some more. Get on, getting on. <laughs> the monsters murmur and mutter, spit and snarl. They're deciding what best to find you as a monster. Wait patiently, yell at them to hurry up, take a nap. Let's wait. That's always a good idea. After a while, the muttering stops, though the murmuring goes on for a, some time longer. Finally, the assembled monsters come to a decision. Well, what is it? The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you while the smaller adults crouch low. Your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. Wait, what's happening? Do your part in the ceremony of adulation. Let's do our part. The other monsters hold you in some respect. One out of a possible hundred points. <laughs> Good for them. It is immediately clear to the monsters that you are very kind for a monster. So nice of them to think so. The crowd shoves two monsterlings into the circle, each with a broken arm. An elder asks you to take care of them. Apply general first aid, gently tend to their wounds. Requires high kindness. Um, can I do this one? Yes, you croon and pet the monsterlings until they grow drowsy, then splint their damaged limbs in silence. They leave quietly, feeling much better. Everyone cheers. Accept their respect and move on. Yay, that was good. I got a lot of bravery on that one. Yay, we're moving on. You're an adult now. You'll grow stronger over time, but your personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. Onward to adulthood. Yay, poli pot? <laughs> politic with monsters. Explore the Veil Mist. Ooh, let's do that. Oh, what's this one? You stalk the forest, hunting an elusive swift elk. Suddenly, it emerges from the underbrush, lowering its antlers and pawing at the ground. It's going to charge. Perfect. Tear it apart or run away. I don't want to kill a deer, so I'm going to run away. You flee from the terrifying, terrifying undulate. Okay, let's do one of these. Ooh, snake. What is this? I want to see what this is. Your neighbor, the elder monster, Elilia, walks slowly in the direction of the brood cave. Who is she? <laughs> she's one of your next door neighbors, but she's much older than you. Months and months. She has tough scales and eyes of several different sizes. Um, let's watch her. She pass As she passes down the road, some of the other elders nod to her. They then go to her hovel and start smashing things. Ask an elder what's going on. It's none of your business, really. Let's ask. Greed Blitz stops tearing apart Elia's... That's how I'm going to say it. Dining room table and says, She feels herself beginning to dissolve. She's going to go release herself and become one with the slime in the spawning vat. What happens when monsters dissolve themselves? Monsters who get to a certain age either settle into their personality and shape forever... Or they let themselves become one with the slime from which they came. Their personality can have an eff effect on future generations of monsterlings. Oh, cool. Join the monsters clearing out her hovel, run after her, and thank her for her contribution. Um, aw, this one's cute. I gotta do that. You're going to be remembered, Alia, and we'll see a bit of you in every monsterling from now on. Alia wipes a slimy tear from one of her smaller eyes and sniffs. Give her a hug, tell her a joke. Give her a hug. You hug Elia. She squishes. Her body is already starting to break down and dissolve. She breaks away, smiling one last time, and walks quickly toward the brood cave. You'll never see her again. Okay. That was cool and sad. Let's do three-eyed goat. Oh, jeez, this looks scary. A squirrel hops into a pool of sunlight, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready to burp berry nuts and make something of itself. You drop on, on it from a branch, grab it, and twist its head off. I didn't want to do that! Delicious decapitation! A young wolf suddenly leaps in front of you, snaps the squirrel out of your claws, and runs off, laughing and barking. Wolves can bark now, isn't that only dogs? Turn the tables on the wolf, chase the wolf into the bushes. Let's turn the tables. A second squirrel creeps up and pokes at the dis discorporated head of the first one. You grab the new squirrel and chew on it a little, thinking... Lure the wolf closer with the squirrel, or show everyone an omen you're smarter than this wolf. Let's lure it. You dangle the squirrel over your your maw, waiting. The wolf tries to steal it as planned. You slash her with your claws, and she flees, having learned not to mess with you again. I don't even 
even have claws. I look like a pear and I've got little sticky fingers. But oh well, we did it. What's this one? Looks like a party. Balfog and Gritmitten are arguing in the street over a cat. They both want kitty croquets for lunch. Sounds yummy. So what's the problem? Excuse me, I'm burping now. Balfog says he caught the cat, but Grit Gritmitten says it says it was in his larder before it got out. Both monsters turn to you as a neutral party to decide. Finders eaters, clearly the, the cat is Balfog's, try to make everyone happy. Balfog hide, holds the cat close, stroking it absently. The cat mews and rubs its head against its shittinous gripper. Ask Balfog if, just this once, sharing it is on the table, along with the cat. Demand to hold the cat while you mediate the dispute. Let's ask if he'll share it. You're able to persuade Balfog to give grit Grit Mitten the cat's tail. So that's something. Grit Mitten thanks you for your intercession. That's not a lot of sharing there, but oh well. Okay, let's do a couple more. Let's do. Ooh! You spy a wolf outside a small wooden cabin. From within the building, you hear the bleeding of goat kids. Watch the wolf, work with the wolf to get the goat kids, attack the wolf while it's back is turned. Let's watch him. What's he doing? Ah, he's trying to get in, but the goat kids have barred the door. Let's attack the wolf. You, he hears you and bolts. Chase him down. You give a good chase, but only manage to snag his tail away before you run out of steam. Nuts! No, the tail. A bit grisly. Still not bad. Not a bad meal. Okay. Let's go back to this one. Let's... Let's do some healing. That was nice. The Spine Doctor is treating two injured monsters in Portland Square. She breaks off her own quills and uses them like sewing needles. A little iron pot boils over a small fire, but it's just water. The Doctor seems to have run out of something. Who's the Spine Doctor? She's Marianus's cousin twin and has many pointy bits all over her body. She's an ancient monster, older than, even than an elder, and has healed the sick for many years. Okay. She's run out of something. Who's hurt? Continue to watch. Offer to get involved. Uh, let's offer to get involved. Kindness Max. Nice! You join the Spine Doctor, who accepts your help approvingly. How will you aid her? Hold the cuts closed while the doctor prepares the medicine. Offer to fetch medicine for the Spine Doctor. See if either patient has anything worth stealing. Let's hold them closed. It's sticky work, but you pinch shut the wounds and staunch the bleeding long enough for the doctor to ready a healing salve. Nice! We did it! Okay, let's do a couple more on here. We won't finish it off, but a small pack of elder monsters are huddled at the edge of Omen, watching the woods and discussing something in hushed tones. Listen in. Elder Hamrex is saying, this could simply be a rumor. We don't know they're out there for sure. Leave it be or ask what's going on. Hamrex says, some of the younger monsters have seen others in Veilmist. Val monsters from no town we know of. Thin and cold, without food or shelter. Suggest everyone be on guard. Offer to host any homeless monster in your hovel. Promise you'll remember the warning. Are they homeless or are they dangerous? <coughs> the elders are impressed by your unusual offer. They look at each other, then shift their conversation in the same direction. If the strange monsters come into Omen now, they won't be met with violence. Nice! We did it! We made the safe place for them. Okay, one more. Let's do Yelly Do. It's the Scream Along Sing Along. Everyone's screaming. Loudest monster wins. Scream, sing, scream, sing. You're totally gonna break some windows and eardrums, but why are all these monsterlings here? Your singing has been known to hurt their little ears. Sing quietly using mostly stomach noises. Belt it out, you gotta win. Pre smash the village windows. Then sing! Let's belt it out. You sing about loss and secret love and a plate with no pancakes on it. Your song is sad and strong, but the other monsters sense that you're holding back. The monsterlings, on the other hand, are terrified. Sing proudly but rein it in. Cut loose at full power and scream. Ooh. The monsters aren't impressed, but the monsterlings are terrified. Let's not scare the kids too bad. Even though we're monsters, Windows crack, eardrum, eardrums perforate, and monsterlings flee. Later, you find out that they heard your screams in Znack, miles and miles away. So that wasn't so bad. 
Nice! We did a pretty Hey, this guy looks almost exactly like me. And so is this guy. Then I've also seen because the main menu has so many different endings on it. I I'm sure you can play this game forever. I might do I'm gonna do another run through after this. I might do a third one, I'm not sure. We'll see. See how long it takes me to get through like the actual run of the game. But I love this game, it's so cute, it's so interesting, and the stories in it are just so adorable. But thank you guys so much for joining me again for Monster Loves You. I love you. Stay amazing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! This game has awesome music, too.